Hello, I'm Craig from Carsalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's files linked in the description to work through them together as we continue Section 2.1, Fill Cells Based on Existing Data. Let's get started. So we worked on Excel's Flash Fill in the last video. Today we're going to be working on their Fill Series. So with the 2.1 workbook open, we're going to go on to the second tab, which is the Fill Series tab. We're going to start up here in cell A2 under the linear heading, and we are going to create a linear series that begins at zero, has a step value of five and a stop value of 50. So fill series is rather than kind of just dragging with our fill handle and hoping Excel picks up the, the pattern that we want. In this case, it just kept with zeros. That's not necessarily what we wanted. I could try and uh, give it a clue and go to a five here. And then I could try and watch the counter until it gets to 50. Um, so that would be a second method of doing it. But um, what they're showing us today is with the fill series. So uh, we'll do it once with the mouse. And then after that, I'll use exclusively the keyboard to work through these. Uh, our fill series is here on the home tab. We have our fill heading over here on the right hand side. And inside fill, uh, we have the series option. So let's click that. And we now have a little uh, interaction box here. And it is asking us, how do we want our series? Do we want it in rows or columns? So if we select rows, what will happen is our series will go left to right across the page. So we want to select columns. There's a type. Uh, in this case, we've been directed to give a linear um, growth type. So basically, it's just going to add basically the value that we tell it rather than multiplying. Uh, we've been told that our step value is going to be 5. So we'll enter that here. And also we've been given a stop value. So let's try this. And sure enough, it's kind of replicated what we did before. Uh, so if I was, I was only doing a series this long, uh, I would probably just use the fill handle and have it follow a pattern. But where fill series is great is let's say I wanted uh, it to go up to 5,000 or 50,000. Uh, and, and it can get tedious trying to drag it down and, and having the screen scroll to get that done. Fill series lets you say, hey, I want to have this go all the way up to this value, enter it in, and then Excel takes care of worrying about which row to stop in. All right, next we're going to do a growth series. And so we'll go into cell B2, and this time rather than using our mouse, uh, we'll do use the keyboard. But essentially it's the same set of steps. So uh, I'm going to go to my home tab in the ribbon by Alt-H. I'm going to select the fill option, which is FI, and then S to get to series. Once I'm in this dialog box, I can still use my keyboard to navigate in it. So instead of rows, if I want columns, the C is underlined, so I can just hit Alt-C. Uh, the type, we want growth, which is Alt-G. And then my step value, Alt-S, is going to be 2. And our stop value, Alt-O, is going to be 250. So let's hit OK here. And now we have a series that now is growing exponentially. So every step up, we're multiplying by 2. If I had had the 3, it would go up by, by multiplying by 3. But in this case, it's just multiplying by 2 every time. And you'll notice that it stopped here at 128. It didn't go to 250 uh, because the next uh, pattern in the series would be 256. So it stopped here at the smaller level, or excuse me, smaller number. Our next is we're going to work on some of our date series. So we'll go into cell uh, column C. This time we're going to highlight C2 through C11, uh, but we're going to go through the same set of steps, Alt H, FI, and S. Um, Excel in this case uh, recognizes that we're in a column here, so I don't have to choose that. It also notices that we are using dates, so I don't have to select that either. Um, we want to use a day unit, so that's already selected, but we're going to change our step value up to 2. We don't need to worry about a, a stop value if we don't want because we do have our, our column already selected here. And when we, I uh, hit OK, you'll notice that every two days, or excuse me, the date goes up every other day, all the way to the end of the series. Next, we're going to use the weekday functionality. So in our last sample, it just went up a, a single day uh, via the calendar. And this time, uh, we want it to only do it with weekdays. So we're going to select the same uh, length of series all the way down to D11. We'll go into our fill series, Alt, H, F, I, and S. 
Um, date is still accurate here, but we're going to go to weekday. Alt-W selects my weekday. We're going to leave the step unit of 1, so it's not going to skip days anymore. And we'll click OK. And so now you'll notice that we have the first, the second, the third, and then it skips the fourth and the fifth because those are weekend periods. And then it starts up on the sixth, goes through the tenth, so there's our five business days, and then skips two days before it starts up at the thirteenth and the fourteenth. So that might be a more appropriate date series for your purposes. All right, and we have one more example here for the, for the textbook. And that's we're going to go into column E. We'll select down to E2. And this time we want a step unit of months. Uh, so we'll go Alt H, F, I, and S. Uh, our date unit is going to be Alt M for month. And we want to go with a step value of 6. So that's Alt S, 6. And we'll click OK. And now our date has gone up. Instead of going by days, we've gone up month by month. Uh, for that whole series. So we end up in July of 2024. So I'm going to throw in a couple bonus items at the end here. Uh, we'll go through how to hide and unhide columns, which is something I use quite a bit. But this is all of the tasks, all the practice tasks for this particular section. Uh, so if you don't want the bonus material, you can sign off here. Otherwise, continue on and I'll show you a couple other neat tricks that I use quite a bit. All right, thanks for sticking around. So uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through here how to hide extra columns. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of having all this extra white space to the right of my work. Uh, for one, it's kind of unsightly. Uh, second, I control navigate a lot. And, and if I control right arrow, uh, it takes me to the last cell. Um, and and, and it's, that's in this case, it's all the way to column XFD. So instead, let's have it set up so it looks like it does on this tab here that I've added, where there's nothing over here to the right. I don't have to worry about ending up over in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's quick and it's easy, and I find it to be uh, very helpful. Uh, so how we're going to do this is we are going to select all of the columns, in this case from F all the way to the end. And so we could uh, kind of click up here and then um, shift all the way over. But what I'll do, of course, is use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to hit Control Space Bar, which uh, selects every uh, whole column. Then I'm going to hold down my uh, Shift key and Control Arrow to the right. And now I've selected all of the columns all the way to the very last one here over in X, F, and D. In order to hide these, this is in the... Um, the uh, formatting section here. Sorry, I, I know it by the keyboard. I don't know it so much by the uh, by the the ribbon. So here's O. So what I would typically do is once these are selected, I would hit Alt H O U uh, and then C for hide columns, and then they are all gone. It takes me about a second and a half, and then I don't have to worry about them anymore. So that's fine. Now, what if you want to see the columns? Uh, you know, you can't expand them like you would normally. So let's go through how to, to show them again. Uh, we'll use our uh, Control A shortcut. So if I hit Control A once, it's going to select all the data in this particular array. Uh, and because I want to actually select everything, I'm going to hit Control A a second time. Uh, alternatively, if I was outside of the, that array, Control A would do that for me automatically. Uh, our third option is using our keyboard, or excuse me, using our mouse. And if I click this little gray arrow in the upper left-hand corner, that gives me this, the, uh, the same capability. So what we're going to do is navigate into our format uh, option in our ribbon. So that's Alt-H, uh, O for format. I'm going to go into U for hide and unhide, and I'm going to select L for unhide columns. And so that has brought all of those hidden columns back. All right, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to find a use for that in your regular use. But thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.